on this computer. Okay. Hi, Sasha. <laughs> Did you hear that? That we're going to watch the fantastic Mr. Fox on Thursday. And I also came up with um, Nora just while we're waiting for people to join us um, a little. Oh, I'm going to stop the recording for a minute. So here we go. It is Wednesday, November 30th. And we're in science and we've been studying forces and mass. We're in lesson 6.05. And I told you yesterday to please join me with some stuff. If you happen to have the stuff that they had on the list for building a catapult, awesome. If you don't, I just went in the kitchen and found all sorts of stuff that might work and some rubber bands. And then I put one around my wrist so I wouldn't forget. I've got some rubber bands. I've got some tape. I've got some stuff. And we'll just see what I can come up with and what you can come up with that will work as a catapult. Um, hopefully, you'll have fun building something today. And if not, hopefully, you'll get some ideas for building something in the future. So I'm going to share my screen to start out with. And we're just going to go take a look at this lesson. This is lesson 6.05. And this is page 5 out of 15 pages. And so up until here, they had you experimenting with pushing things and noticing the relationship between force and mass with, well, is there anybody here who can tell me what mass is? A de definition of mass? Nora, go ahead. Um, mass is like weight. It is like weight. It's like the yeah. density of an object. So you might have two things that are the same size, like a, think of a styrofoam ball and a rock ball. The rock has a lot more mass than the styrofoam ball, even though they take up the same amount of space, right? So we're talking about the relationship then between that mass, between that weight and, um, and density and your ability to move an object or what, what force is required. In this next activity, you will use a catapult to show the greater the mass of an object, the less effect a given force will have on the object's motion. Print off the forces and, and mass activity sheet. So that's in your notebook. Looks like this. And follow along with the panel slider to learn about the steps of the scientific method and to set up your experiment. Stop after you've completed the procedure um, section of the activity sheet. Next, you will get help building a catapult. So oh, here we go. You need to have, I'm going to stop my share for a second and show you this again. You need to get this piece of paper out. 505, or I mean 605, forces and mass. And we're right at the part where it says question. Okay. And we're going to follow along with the activity. So make sure you grab your science notebook. I see lots of you don't seem to have it. Your science notebook. And it's about halfway through. Um, force and math 605. This is what you're going to have to turn in for the assignment this time. And there goes my cat. That's it? The first one? No, no, the whole thing. But this is oh. the first page, right? So we're going to start filling it in together. So let's go back to sharing the screen. Hopefully you've got this piece of paper in front of you. We're not doing the building the thing yet. The scientific method begins with an observation that leads to a question. The question should be based on an observation. The question builds on what we know, and the question should, when answered, lead to other good questions. Here's an example of good scientific question based on an observation. You observe that a catapult can throw a tennis ball a greater distance than a baseball. What is a question you could come up with? Anybody have a question? Will something, how about this? Will something heavier travel farther? Would something with more mass travel farther than something with less mass? Or would, yeah, go ahead, Nora. I think something lighter would travel uh, further. Okay, so what question could you come up with? If you phrase that as a question, you might say, will something with less mass travel further? Right? Yeah. That would be a question. So let's look at their example question. How does the mass of an object affect how far a catapult can throw it? So if you would like to right now, write that question in for your question, you can do that. Um, I'm going to write that down because that's what we're basically testing is how, once we build our catapult, we're only building one catapult. We're not experimenting with different kinds of catapults, but we're going to try to fling different things and see how much the mass affects how far. Wait a minute, wait a minute. what's the question again? Well, it's on the page. How does the mass of an object affect how far a catapult can throw it? If you want to put that in simple terms, you might say 
Do heavier things travel farther or do light things travel farther? How does the mass of an object affect how far the catapult Maybe I could catapult my cat and see if the heavier cat goes further than the smaller cat. But somehow I don't think my catapult will do it. And throw it. No! No! <laughs> don't do that. All right. So everybody get your question written. Okay, 605. If you are just joining us now, we are starting on our scientific experiment for this chapter. It's mod 6.05. We're on page five of the lesson. Looking at our, um, we're in our notebooks on, on lesson 6.05, force and mass. And we're just starting to fill out the questionnaire. It's five pages long. And it is the one that you'll have to turn in for the end of the chapter. So if you'd like to fill it out, on this page, we're looking at the question, how does the mass of an object affect how far a catapult can throw it? So we're gonna to go to the next page and see what it says to do next. Identifying the variables. Variables are something that can be changed or controlled in an experiment. There are three types of variables, test variables, outcome variables, and constant variables. Let's look at each one. The test variable is called the independent variable. It's the thing you're gonna change in the experiment. In this case, it's the mass of the object thrown. And if you look on your page, it says independent or test variable. You're gonna write in mass of object or weight of object. So we're gonna test with different things. I have got an orange. I've got a ball of thread. I've got a cork, I thought I had a tomato and a pistachio, but I don't know what happened to them. I lost the mass of what? Oh, there we go. The mass of an object. So we're gonna test test variable. The thing we're gonna change is how, how big, how much mass there is to an object. So I have tomatoes, I have pistachios, I have an orange, way more mass, and I have this light ball of thread, even though it's kind of bigger than the tomato, I don't think it's as dense, so. Mass of the object is the independent or test variable. The second variable on our worksheet is called the outcome variable. It's also called a dependent variable. The outcome variable is what is measured. So what are we measuring in this case? Are we testing how high it goes? Are we testing you know, how it spins? Or are we testing how far it goes? Far. How far. So our outcome variable is gonna be how far does it go? How far does it go? Hmm, okay. And then my constant variable is the thing I'm gonna keep the same. And in this case, we're gonna use the same catapult for all of our flinging. So you might wanna do a different experiment later and try out different catapults, but that's not what we're testing this time. If you decided to use one object, like my tomato here, and fling it with different catapults and see which catapult flings it farther, then the catapult would become your test variable, right? Not the mass of the object. So it's really kind of like what you're testing. All right, now it says, let's go to our next page. Identify the variables that relate wait to- Wait a minute, wait a minute. What, what's okay, the okay. This is page five and it's all in front of you on page five. What's the outcome? Not caught up, go to page five, Eli. <laughs> And it has all of this on it. I'm not going to stay forever because it'll take too long. We're going to go on. Check our answer. Oh, we already know. Oh, here it tells you the answers too. <laughs> all right, here we go. Write your hypothesis. So this is what Nora was saying earlier when I said that I was going to test if heavier things went further. She said her hypothesis is that the less mass, the further it's going to go. So a hypothesis is a statement or an explanation that can be tested further. Your hypothesis is kind of your guess. It includes your variables and an attempt to explain it. So for example, in Nora's case, she might write down, my hypothesis is I believe the lighter object will go further because it won't take as much force to fling it, 
right? I might say, I believe the heavier object will go further because once it's moving, it's gonna have a lot more momentum and weight to keep it moving. Okay, so whatever you believe is gonna happen in the experiment, that's what you're gonna write down. So here's our question. How does the mass of an object affect how far the catapult can throw it? So now you have to guess what you believe will be happening. If you truly believe the light things will go further, then explain that. If you think that the more mass, the uh, farther it's gonna go, explain that. You need to choose. So I believe the more mass or the less mass, the object has, the farther it will fling. <laughs> and then make sure to put in the because part. Why you think that? Because um, more mass. More force to move. I mean, it's kind of an interesting thing because we know that mass has a lot to do with gravity and the bigger the mass, the more gravity, we have more pull. So you might say you think the more mass, the more pull it will have because the earth has a lot of pull and it has a lot of gravity. You need to think about what you really believe. And then it says, check your answer and then write your hypothesis on your activity sheet. So let's see what the answer says. If you increase the mass of an object, the catapult will throw it a shorter distance. So the the computer is telling us that the more mass, the shorter it's gonna go. They agree with Nora. You may have a different hypothesis because your hypothesis is what you truly believe based on your scientific understanding. And they didn't really explain it here either, which they should have explained it. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds more to write down your hypothesis. I believe the more mass, the farther it's going to go, or I believe the more mass, the shorter it's going to go, or I believe the more mass, at a certain point, the mass won't be enough. My catapults will be too wimpy. <laughs> I don't have any spoon. Well, you'll have to find something that will fling, or you'll have to go to a, next time somebody goes to McDonald's, have them pick up a spoon. Or go to your neighbor's. You actually don't have to have a plastic spoon. You could have a metal spoon. Yeah. And then you could put it on like a glue stick. Oh, look at you. And then you could go like that and it'll go up. Yeah, true. Okay, here we go. Investigating force and mass. People have always enjoyed throwing rocks. The surface of the water still is glass. Some people have contests to see who could throw the rock the farthest. Have you ever noticed that smaller rocks will travel farther than larger rocks? Why do you think that is? Could the mass of the rock affect the distance it can travel? I don't know though, because sometimes if you get a big, a little teeny rock, you can't throw it as far as the one with a little more weight. In this next activity, you'll use a catapult to show that the greater the mass of an object, the less effect a given force will have on the object's motion. Print off the forces and mass activity sheet, follow along in the panel slider to learn about the steps of the scientific method and set up your experiment. Stop after you have completed the procedure section and then we'll build the catapult. Well, here we go. Write a list of all the materials you need to do the experiment. So if, if you want to use the list that they have, it's on the next page. If you want to use your own list of things that you found, just write down what you've got. If you don't have anything, well, like, um, like both Kainoa and Nora said, all you really need is a spoon to do this. So go to the next page of your force and mass, and it says materials. Spoon, rubber band, uh, I'm going to use a cork. I've got some objects with different mass. You definitely need that. So you might have something light and something heavy. I've got a pistachio. I've got a tomato. You can tell we just had a big feast because all this food is around. I've got an orange. And I have a ball of string, very scientific. All right, those are my materials. I have some tape in case I need to tape it down. Excellent. What materials would you need to investigate the following question? How does the mass of an object affect how far it can be thrown with a catapult? Let's check our answer. List of materials needed. 
objects with different mass, scale, ruler, tape measure, catapult. Oh, we need a, some sort of a way to measure the distance, don't we? I've got a tape measure downstairs. Maybe you have a ruler or a yardstick, meter oh. stick. Or you can use your feet to measure it off. You can measure how many feet it takes, like with your real feet, like oh, okay. one foot, two foot. Oh, my sock's really dirty. Now think about the steps that you're going to go through to do the experiment. So here we go. I'm going to go up here and we're going to check the steps. Here's their answer. One, identify three different objects with different mass. So I've got my pistachio, my tomato, and my orange. I've actually got four. So step one, identify three plus objects with different mass. If you had a ping pong ball, clay, you could have a penny. What about a clay ball? Well, clay is perfect because you could use the same clay and have different sizes of it. So you could have a tiny clay ball and a bigger one and a bigger one. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I don't happen to have any clay. Step two. Place the mass on the catapult and push the spoon all the way down. So step two, um, put object in catapult and pull down or push down. And here I'm, I'm actually numbering them one, two, three. Uh, step three, release and measure the difference. Release and measure the distance. And also, I think it's really important to write it down. Record your data. And they gave us a chart to record on, so that's good. And then it says repeat two more times. Why do we do the experiment more than once? So you might get a different result. Mm -hmm. So we want to kind of know the average result. So you're going to do it three times with each object. Then it says to repeat those steps with the other two objects. Repeat steps one through four or one through three with the other objects. Okay. And then it says make measurements based on your results or make observations based on your results. Okay. So then make observations. That means you you don't try to really explain it. You just try to say exactly what you saw happen. So there are your steps. And all of this is contained in the lesson. I see Nora's ready to go. <laughs> all right, we're going to go to the next page, which is the build the caterpillar page. Here we are. You may have observed that throwing a lighter object with the same force might be easier than a heavier object. In order to test this, you need to gather some observations, scientists-based conclusions on evidence that proves the statement. In this experiment, we'll use a catapult to test our hypothesis. You may have built a catapult in previous grade. If you have, then you can go and get your catapult and skip the next part. Um, I lost my catapult. I don't have a catapult. Otherwise, follow along with the panel slider to build your catapult. Your catapult should work like the one shown on this clip. But if it works differently, that's okay too. They have you use seven craft sticks, seven rubber bands, a plastic spoon, modeling clay, and safety glasses. I don't have those things, but I'm just going to follow along anyway. Stack the five craft sticks on top of each other and then wrap elastic tight around both ends of the stack. Place one craft stick perpendicular underneath. Place the last craft stick perpendicular above the stack and it'll make a T shape. All right, I'm actually just starting with a plastic knife instead of a stack of those. And since I don't have five of them to stack them together, I'm going to use a cork. <laughs> and I don't really have a T shape, but I guess I could tie this on the bottom to make it more stable. All right, and then it says to strap it all together with, and I don't have a rubber band for that. I'm just gonna use tape to strap it all together. So I am making a T shape out of my objects, but I'm making it with tape. Here we go. Let's see. 
table. I, I have like um, a pom pom and I have a uh, modeling clay. Awesome. And you already built your catapult. When did you build it? I just built it right now. Did you? Oh, All you need is, you just need some, I took hair bands. Yeah, that And I took work. an, like, um, is it what's working? it called? Um, okay. I took glue, okay. Elmer's glue, I don't know, the glue stick. And then I tied it with this kitchen spoon. Very creative. <sighs> I'm making my little X like this. And now I'm going to, instead of stacked sticks, I'm going to actually put this fork on here. Where's my, yeah, that'll work. Oh, this is going to be so good. Okay, but I'm not using rubber bands. I'm actually just using tape because I don't have that many rubber bands. I'll use the rubber band later because I don't have that many. I don't have seven rubber bands. Now, boy, what I needed was the pumpkin covered in rubber bands, didn't I? We had a lot of pump, we had a lot of rubber bands on our pumpkin when we did in person. We never did get it to break though, because I think it took way more rubber bands than we had. <laughs> if you're on a TV show like that guy was on, you get to have other people put your rubber bands on for a day. Okay, getting our getting our thing built. Hopefully you're creatively building yours. Ah, dropped it. Here's my beautiful thing my X with my thing in the middle of it. All right, pinch one end of the single sticks together and tightly wrap an elastic. Place the, oh, last craft stick perpendicular. It should make a T-shape. Attach the plastic spoon to the opposite end of the single sticks and use elastic to keep it in space. So here's my, here's my spoon and I'm supposed to use elastic to knock it into space so it'll fling. I think it's gonna work. Got my elastic, let me get my spoon on. Hmm. Big clay ball. Attaching it with the elastic is not easy. It's oh. a hard feeling. What's that? It's hard. The putting the rubber band on? Yeah. I don't have a, I used to have one, but it did got broken. Rubber band? No, this no, the, I, I had, a, I made a catapult back in. Okay. So, but it broke, I think. I think my catapult's pretty good. Look at that. It worked pretty well. I got it attached. I think it's gonna fling. All right, yeah, pinch one end together, attach the opposite end and use elastic bands to keep the spoon in, in place. Huh, they, they want a lot of elastic bands on there. Huh, I wonder if my spoon's gonna fall off because it doesn't have that many elastic bands. I better put another one on just in case. I've got a hair band here. Okay, there it is. Looks pretty good. Is there anybody who needs more time to build theirs? Using your catapult. To use your catapult, roll up a small amount of modeling clay into a ball, place it in the spoon, press down on the spoon, release it, and launch it. Keep your catapult safe until it's ready to be used. And it says to wear safety glasses. So if you have some glasses around, pop those on. I'm gonna try mine out. Mine is like, my, I don't have like a safe. I just, so you just put the clay ball in and then you just fling it. Oh, <laughs> my tomato moved. Did you guys see it? <laughs> yeah. Yes, so mine actually is just supposed to work. All right, before moving on to perform the experiment, take a moment to make sure you're following the steps of the scientific method. Use the mind map to review questions and information. If you answer yes, you're ready to move on. Where's our mind map? Hmm. That's the mind map. Select each of the bubbles, okay. Variables, boom. Is your outcome variable something you can measure? Yes but I forgot to go get the tape measure. I'll have to get that. Hypothesis. Is your hypothesis written in the if then formula? No, <laughs> they didn't tell us to write it that way. So I guess my hypothesis should say, if something has more mass, then it will travel farther or then it will travel not as far. They did not tell us to write it that way. I believe if the object has more mass, okay, if more mass goes less far. Okay, all right, I changed it to if then. All right, let's look at the next one. Okay, materials, have you listed all your materials? Yep, 
procedure? Have you listed all the steps of your experiment? Yes. All right, I think we're ready. You'll need to wait until you're prompted to perform the experiment. Okay, we're watching. Let's go to the next page, self-check review. It's time to show off how much you've learned. Test out your skills in this activity. Mm, we're skipping it. <laughs> Skippy. Well, because that's for you guys to do on your own. Oh, what happened to the experiment? Did I miss it? Oh no, here we go, here it is. Determine the mass of each object. Um, okay, record the mass on the activity sheet. So we have to turn the page and we have to fill in our objects. Object one is going to be my lightest one. It's the pistachio. Actually, I think I'll start with the heaviest. The yeah. orange. Yeah. I don't think the orange is going to go very far. I Object think one, orange, and it tells me to weigh it in grams, but I do not have a scale. So I'm going to say, um, if this is one, then the orange is like a hundred. Is that like, um, like a 10. And then this one, this one is maybe like a uh, 25. So just kind of make a scale. So my second object is a tomato. And my third object is a pistachio. <laughs> All food. All right, and we have to do three trips and take measurements. So I'm what? gonna run and get my tape measure. I only you have two. All ready. Oh, you got your safety glasses. I like those. Those are awesome. I, I only have two. <laughs> well, find something else around the room. I'll be right back. I have to grab my tape measure. That guy, I splitted the orb even more. So I have a smaller, like medium. Small clay ball. Oh, okay. I got my tape measure. Now I'm ready. You guys ready to do your experiment? All right. I'm going to turn off my share and we're going to do our experiments and you guys can show me what you do too. Excellent. I see the safety goggles. You've got your thing and I've got my tape measure. I'm going to spread it out. I don't think it's going to go very far. I hope it'll hit the wall, but I don't think it will. Okay. I guess I better turn it this way. Uh oh. <laughs> All right. I have clay, so I'm just going to split like a part. And here we go. The orange. I don't think the orange is even going to go anywhere. Do you? Um, I think it's gonna go kind of far. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't go very far. So that actually that time it went to maybe six. I'll put trial one. I don't know if I have Eight tape inches. Measure. I don't have tape to measure. Well, then you can use it using like you can measure with your hand, one hand, two hand, three hand. You can use thumbs. Oh. Actually, your pinky is about a centimeter, so you can use pinky. You can measure like this or feet, depending on how far it goes. Okay, but come up with some way of measuring. Here we go, try two. It went backwards. <laughs> <laughs> what is that, like negative? Oh, that only made it to two. That is not good. Okay, the second one, it went like zero, and the third one, it went right. two. Let's use my tiny clay. Now, when it tells you to average it, do you guys remember how to average three numbers? Anybody remember how you do your average? No. You add all three numbers together and then you divide it. So in my case, it went six inches and then zero inches and then two inches. So that's eight inches. I need to divide it by three because there were three trials. So I do eight divided by three. If I had eight objects and I was giving them to three people, I would give everyone one, right? And then that would be three. And then I get everyone two, that would be six. I'd have two left that I had to split up. So my last two, I'd split into three pieces each and everybody would get two thirds. So two, two thirds is my average distance, two and two thirds inches. If you have a calculator, you could add all three of your numbers together and then divide by three. That gets you your average, but get your first three numbers. What'd you get, Nora? What were your first three numbers? Um, my first three numbers, so the heavy one went 
first one went three, three inches. And then you're only doing the you're only doing one object right now, three times with the same object. Yeah. Okay. And then so you got three inches. And then it went seven inches. And, and then it went back to three inches. Okay, so you add those together. Seven is 10 and three more is 13. Yeah. Divide that by three. Um, three times four is 12, right? So everybody gets four and then you have one left over that you divide by three and that's one third. So your average is four and a third. So you need to write that down as your average, four and a third. How about anybody else? You get anything? All right, I'm ready to try my second object. Here I go. You guys ready? I'm excited about this. It's this little tomato. It's good. I think it's going to go further. I'm hoping it'll go really far. Here we go. I'm putting it in here. I'm pulling down and fling. Ooh, nice. The tomato made it 25 inches. Wow, I'm going to record that. Trail one, 25 inches. My, my, the tiny ball went 28. Now I'm going to shoot it at my cat. Can you see the cat over there? No, you're going to hit him. <laughs> He's going to try and eat my tomato. It went 28 inches. My cat really wants to eat my tomato, I think. 28 the cat inches. Likes tomato? Well, the cat, I'm going to hit him if he stands there. Kitty, move or I'm going to have to bomb you with this tomato. <laughs> one, one singular inch. <laughs> Cat interference with my experiment. Looks like you're having dog interference. No, I'm not having dog interference. My dog isn't allowed in my room. No, Sasha is. 35 inches on my last one. Now, if I have a calculator, I add up my three numbers and then divide it by three. So I'm going to go to my calculator and I'm going to put 25 plus 28. Where's my calculator? Open calculator. Okay, here we go. All clear. How did how did I get how did, okay? How did the first trial? This only went. It only went one centimeter. Okay, I added up twenty five and twenty eight and thirty five, and then I divided it by three, and I came out twenty nine point three inches. So that was way further. Now I get to test my little, little one, my pistachio nut. It's very light, it's very small. And here we go, the kitty's watching. Pretty excited. In it goes, stretching it down and, oh my gosh, it hit the wall. <laughs> I'm gonna have to back up. <laughs> Uh-oh, that little guy went so far. All right, I might have to open the door too because it seems to want to go in the other room. Six. All right, I'm moving this. Seven. I'm moving this Gotta go further. I'm stretching Six. out my right. a lot further. 16. All right, let's see how this one does. That was exciting. Wow. All right, let's try again. Can you guys see? You probably can't see the whole way. Okay, here we go. I, okay, the first my first object went five point three. Is wow, that's pretty good. Five point three inches or feet? It's a centimeter. Oh, centimeters. Okay. Somehow. Right. Here we go. I'm on my last. Uh oh, where did my nut go? Now I lost my pistachio. I guess because I flung it. Okay, here we go. Fling. Test number one of the last object. Woo! 72 inches, yay! Two inches? 72. 72 inches. Yeah, amazing. Let's try this one. Oh my goodness. Here it goes. It went, it went like... Okay, it hit the ceiling. This one hit the ceiling. It went up so high. Yeah, mine hit the, my door. I will tell you, this experiment seems to work. We seem to be proving our hypothesis. Okay, I got to do that again because it hit the ceiling. Can't have it hit the ceiling. Uh oh, that time I didn't pull it down far enough. You have to make sure you pull it down far enough, don't you? 29? Oh, 
That one went 122 inches. 100! Very, are you guys writing down your results in your chart? I'm mm -hmm. typing it because I don't have my notebook. Well, that's fine. Oh, that was a good one. That one went last shot. 81 inches. <laughs> now I have to add up my three numbers and divide it by three to get my average. So let's see here. All clear. Yeah. 72 plus 122 plus 81 divided by three equals. Uh oh, that's not right. I got 221, which can't be right. I think I didn't get it divided. Okay, so let me try again. 122 plus 72 plus 81 equals 275 divided by three equals. 91.6 inches. Nine. Ooh. All right. What does the data show? And here you just do an observation. So the wow. data shows the object with the least mass went furthest okay, it actually went size diversion and it, it went about it's interesting because you know how i estimated the first one was like a a one the second one a 25 and the third one a hundred times the same weight it went about that much further so it went a hundred times further a hundred times farther than the heaviest object yeah, the okay. heaviest object Okay, what can you learn from the data? I can learn that it's true. True objects with more mass move less with the same force. Well, objects with more mass move less are with the same force. Hmm. Ooh. Was my hypothesis correct? I think it's going to take us through this whole part, actually. I'm going to go back to sharing my screen because I think it'll take us through all these questions as we go through the last bit. Select each marker to learn more about the parts of a graph. Make sure you do not complete your conclusions yet. Let's see what this says. Okay, use the results from your three trials to create a bar graph. Oh, that's kind of fun. So you can make a graph of your results if you want to by adding your details. That's a fun thing to do. We usually make graphs in class. I don't know if we'll do that this year. Repeat the investigation. So it's your turn to take the role and do your experiment. Use your activity sheet. Walk through the experiment with your friend or family member and help them perform it. So if you have a brother or sister, you could do it again and see if they get the same results, which means it's a really good experiment. Self-check. It's time to show how much you've learned. We're going to keep going to the part where we're filling in the last bit. Which object would travel farther if the same force was applied to both objects? Depends what they're made of. If this, if this mean, uh, we don't know how heavy they are, right? By looking yeah. at them. Um, <laughs> okay, they're talking about the mass here. And you just do some experiments with mass and force. And then on page 12, it looks like we get to our conclusions. No experiment is complete without a conclusion. A conclusion represents the main findings of your experiment, as well as presenting a way to share your results with other people. Conclusions are often supported by information from other sources. What do you think would happen if someone else conducted the same experiment as you with the same objects? Complete yeah. the conclusion section by answering the following questions. What does the data show? What can you learn? Were you able to prove your hypothesis? What can you conclude? Now that you've completed the experiment, what new questions do you have? 
Okay. So I don't think that they walk you through this last bit. I think they just kind of leave you on your own to answer those questions. So let's do it together. Was our hypothesis correct? Why or why not? Well, my hypothesis was wrong because I thought the things with bigger mass would not go as far. So I need to say that. My hypothesis was correct or my hypothesis was incorrect. And then because, because the objects. Uh, is there a book club already? Is it 1.30? I mean, 2.30? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's 2. <laughs> we need to meet. Greater mass uh, did not travel as far, but I want to finish this. I'll just do it very quickly, okay? So say whether your uh, whether your hypothesis was right. What can you conclude from the experiment? And that's kind of the same as what can you learn from the data? And then now that you've completed the experiment, what new question that you have that you could test? And I would like to test how different catapults it's a different question, but how different catapults move the same mass. So would a, would a longer spoon make it go further? But you can come up with whatever question you have about mass and force. So would a longer catapult spoon make objects of the same mass go farther. Hmm. And I'm not sure what my hypothesis about that would be. Okay. Then number five says, is science based on observation? Explain how observations are important to your experiment. And I will have to say yes, because in my case, um, I observed things different from what I thought would happen. And so sometimes we can have ideas in our head and we can prove them wrong or correct. So yes, yeah, science is based on observation and observations are important because it might prove something different, but when you see it happen, you know it's true. Provide one piece of evidence from scientific resources that supports your findings. So here they want you to do a little bit of data um, in scientific resources that supports your, your findings about mass. So they want you to look it up. If I were sharing the screen, I would put in here, I would go onto a new page and I would just Google that question. How does mass affect uh, force on objects in a catapult? And I would just put it in there and see what comes up because I'll bet all sorts of cool stuff comes up. So here we go. Teach engineering, catapults, teach engineering. How does mass affect catapults? Newton's second law. Ooh, catapult physics. Look at that. That looks interesting. So I'd probably read a little bit of this. And it says that force equals mass times acceleration. So by multiplying the mass of an object and its acceleration, you can find the force that it's exerting. Ooh, that sounds pretty interesting. I'm going to read more about that when I have time. But right now I'm going to stop my share. I'm going to set up a breakout room for my boys book club and everybody else you can take can off. We do, any, can we do a if, breakout? If any of you want to stay and do a breakout room to work on your science, you can do that, okay?